What's up guys, Phoenix here. This video is going to be a DN match commentary video, and this time I'm going to be playing the Card of Demise variant of Cosmos. Now this is a build that, you know, is very heavily inspired by Fraser Smith's top 16 list from, you know, YCS Providence. There are some minor changes, you know, some tweaks to the list and stuff like that. Very, very minor though, because ultimately I am just trying to test the deck for potential play at YCS Origins in Columbus, which is, you know, something that I plan on attending. Now, what this video is, this video is going to follow the same format as the Dev Pro videos I did a little while back where I was also playing with a friend, playing multiple games, then commentated over the games after the fact, kept the video all nice, clean, smooth, to the point, and had, you know, just a lot of general, like, general just card discussion and stuff like that, like play discussion, card discussion, stuff like that. This video is going to be following that same format. The big difference is going to be that it's on DN, and ultimately there are going to be some instances where I have to explain that, you know, some plays are being corrected, some things are being taken back, because of the fact that we are playing on DN, and it's me and my friend having a large playtesting session. What I decided to do with one of my friends was that we got online, and we got on Skype, and decided that we were going to have a large playtesting session for YCS Origins. And this playtesting session ended up being about five hours of me and him on Skype together just playtesting multiple different matchups. And ultimately we got to the point where we decided, you know what, let's record some of these. Let's actually record them and just play out some games. We'll keep like, you know, just the general playtesting, like taking back plays and making better plays thing to an absolute minimum. And ultimately we will just uh, try to make things uh, look like, you know, just general, just playtesting videos because ultimately playtesting is something I really like to do specifically on DN because of the fact that none of your plays are set in stone and if you're on Skype talking to someone you can just discuss plays back and forth and you can correct yourself if you're making a play that may not be the most correct in the situation and you can ultimately better yourself as a player because of that it's something I really really suggest you guys to try if it's not something you have tried is to get on Skype with someone or even just sitting in the same room with someone if they if you have multiple computers or someone has a laptop or something and just chat while you're playing, like actually talk and talk through plays. Even if you're playing with physical cards in front of you, talk through your plays, like divulge resource knowledge so that you can actually like just come together as a collective unit and actually make better plays ultimately and like just try and figure out what the actual play line you should be trying to go down should be. It definitely helps you grow as a player a bit more and it just like gets more opinions in the mental pot that is your mind and how you like to structure plays because you know if you're just limiting yourself to only what you can think of then you're going to be limiting yourself overall if other people have different opinions of different plays you can make that could yield better outcomes if you're trying to you know grow as a player I definitely highly highly recommend playtesting um, in this style of method now this might be something that happens on a live stream in the future as well where I get one of my friends on Skype and we just do a large playtesting session for one of my live streams possibly all depends. All depends on how well uh, DN will run with OBS, uh, ultimately, in terms of how uh, laggy it might end up getting. So, who knows? That's potential plans for the future. But anyway, this video is just going to be, you know, a match where I play with my friend, and there are going to be some minor points in here where you see that we have to correct some play lines, and we have to, you know, just change some things around, because ultimately we're speaking through Skype, and we're discussing plays to try and make the best plays possible, and just try to make, you know, ourselves better duelists in general. So... Hope you guys enjoy. I'm going to try and keep the commentary on the game as uh, pinpoint as possible and explain everything that needs to be explained, especially when there might be some potential like problems where you might not understand what's going on because of the fact that a play string is being corrected. Stuff like that. But just bear with me. And ultimately, let me know if you guys like this style of, uh, style of video in the comments down below. But other than that, let's just jump straight into the match because I've been babbling for probably long enough at this point. Wouldn't you agree? <laughs> let's jump into the games. Alright, so going into the first game of this match, I win Rock, Paper, Scissors, and I elect to go first because I am playing Card of Demise Cosmos, and, you know, traps are very powerful. You kind of have to go first for those to actually work, and honestly, I believe that the Fire King Island deck can't actually win going second against the trap-heavy build of Cosmo because the traps are just so incredibly powerful. Um, but ultimately, my hand is actually really good with Demise and Cosmo Town and some traps, and I end up just using Cosmo Town, shuffling back the Dark Destroyer because I'm trying to draw into either another trap or just another card that I can put on the board to unload out of my hand so the card of Demise does draw three cards. And so I end up drawing another Cosmo Town, so I just play it over the town, set my two cards, and activate card of Demise, and then draw arguably like the three best cards I could have drawn. Like, it was honestly really, really good, probably perfect, um, that I actually like drew the cards that I did here, which was Tin Can, a second card of Demise, and a Call of the Haunted, which just makes the Tin Can that much better. So I normal summon Tin Can, set my Demise, set my Call of the Haunted, Go to my end phase, resolve my card of demise, discarding my hand, which is nothing, and then activating my tin can, 
revealing Dark Destroyer, Dark Lady, and Landwalker. And the reason you don't see any chat happening is because, like I've already said, we are playing through Skype. Like, we're playing and talking on Skype, so we're talking out all these different things. And so there's going to be some situations where, like, it looks like we're, like, just not doing anything or we're, like, rewinding a game state. It's because we're, we're testing. We're not actually, like, holding ourselves to anything to a certain degree. If something can be changed to be better, we do go back and change it because we are play testing. But anyway, so he rolls, and he rolls a 2, and 1-2 was for the Dark Destroyer, as he said to me in the Skype call. And so I added Dark Destroyer to my hand, and now I have Call the Haunted. I've got, you know, Call the Haunted for Landwalker or Dark Lady, all these different things. And it's just really good for me in general. So, he activates Terraforming, gets Fire King Island, activates Island, destroys Slip Rider in his hand, adds Baby Groomings to his hand, and then goes to activate Slip Rider's effect to try and get a pilot out of his deck, to which I just activate Solemn Strike. And so, just, you know, negating that one, getting it out of the way. And then from here on in is where things sort of start getting a little bit complex because, you know, without a chat log or anything to go off of, you pretty much just, you know, wouldn't know what's happening unless I'm explaining it to you. So, he activates e -Telly here, and I'm just talking to him in the call, and I was like, you know, I'm going to chain to your e -Telly. And so I chain called the Haunted to his e -Telly to bring back Dark Lady. Now, this play was something I wanted to make, was because if he puts the pilot on his board, and then, you know, I call the Haunted for Dark Lady here, if he has a, you know, big ship in his hand, he could chain the pilot to my call of the Haunted. And I'm explaining this to him in the phone call, because he thinks that I'm doing it to the... He's trying to clarify if I'm doing it to the response of uh, of the monster hitting the board. I'm like, no, 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 this is in response to your e -telly. And so we're chatting back and forth for a little bit, uh, discussing some options that he could have, because he thinks he just absolutely loses right here, which he very well might, um, because I reveal my sets to him, because I'm just like, you know, I, I'm assuming that he's going to be scooping soon, uh, because we're just, you know, we're playtesting, he doesn't think he can win, so there's no real reason for the game to continue, right? But... He decides that, he's like, wait, I've maxi your call the haunted, we resolve the chain and finally get everything, you know, going the way it needs to be going. I tell him multiple times that he can chain the pilot, he can change whatever pilot he wants to summon off Itali because he thought that he was, you know, going to be summoning the pilot and then I was called haunting. So after we get their chain in, like, in its entirety resolved, um, I reset my cards because he wants to continue the game, see if there's any way that he can try and play it out to win. And so, he activates Cosmotown. And uh, we discuss like what cards he needs to draw in order to win, and he just activates Cosmo Town, pops his uh, straw man off the Fire King Island, uh, leaving the board, and then reveals a card, shuffles it back into the deck. It was like another straw man, I believe, if I remember correctly. And then, you know, things happen from there. He decides to scoop because he can't play through the warning, and I'm just gonna kill him next turn because, you know, he knows I have a Dart Destroyer in my hand, and I have a Tin Can up that I could potentially just get an effect off of in the end phase again. There's multiple different things. He doesn't draw any combination of cards that allows him to continue to play the game and not just die next turn to something like Dark Destroyer tagging into Farm Girl, stuff like that. So, I side some cards. I'm very much experimenting with the side deck for this deck and all this sort of nonsense. And so, he absolutely just kind of bricks game two. Uh, he, <laughs> he tells me his entire hand. I can't remember what he told me it was, but it was absolutely just awful. And my hand isn't the best either because it's Card of Demise, which is great, but it's also five other monsters. <laughs> e -Telly is a monster. If I said it, it's dead for the turn. Like, none of this is what I want to actually do with my life and time. So I sit here and contemplate my decision for a little bit while chatting back and forth with him, talking about, like, just different different options and things that this deck can perform. And I ultimately decide that, you know, I'm just going to normal summon Tin Can and then tag it into a Dark Lady. I, you know, activate my Tin Can's ability to tag out, ask for a response. He says there's none, and so I drop my Dark Lady. And now at this point... The, uh, at this point, the Sword Trooper can't activate its effect to tag out. And so, even in the call, he was like, I should have respected the fact that you could have just tagged in a Dark Lady. Um, and he's like, I don't know why I didn't. So, there is that. But he caused Mojo, destroys his Sword Trooper, banishes the Dark Lady. And so, in battle phase, I eat Telly for the Farm Girl, which was, you know, the plan all along. I was trying to, you know, run over the Sword Trooper and clear the way, potentially, for the Farm Girl. That was the entire point of my play with the Dark Lady and all that. And this also just helps to unload my hand a bit further because now I can either search Cosmojo or I can search Cosmotown and, you know, just do things from there. Because if I search, you know, Cosmotown, I'm able to shuffle back my, you know, Dark Destroyer or Strawman, one of them or both, potentially do things like that. And I'm contemplating what I want to actually search. Um, I'm, like, putting the Cosmotown back because I think it might be better to search Cosmojo or maybe I can just kill him if I search a Dark Destroyer. I'm just chatting back and forth with them, trying to decide what the best, you know, play line is. And that is something I actually stress to people when people ask me how, like, how they should be playtesting. 
is that, you know, play with somebody that you trust, that is, you know, a decent skill level in terms of, like, what you would expect, like, you know, average or good players to be. Test with someone you know, test with someone that knows the way you like to play, test with someone you know the way they like to play, and, you know, basically just chat with them, talk with them, talk out plays, um, because, like, even though, like, things could happen, you can just change them. That's one of the reasons why I really like playing on DN, and that's why I'm playing on DN for this video, is because, you know, you can change the outcome, and thus it makes for better playtesting grounds for competitive, you know, scene and competitive events, because you're able to just do this sort of thing. But so, I special summon for that turn, so I can't activate Card of Demise, so I just have to wait for it. Um, and I end up, like, just Cosmo Town shuffling back my uh, Straw Man after I realize I can't OTK him because of the fact that Farm Girl would have already tagged out, and there's no other small pilots other than Tin Can and Farm Girl. So, like, there's there's no real way for me to do anything here. Um, so I attack him with the Dark Destroyer, shuffle my Straw Man back, and I just draw a Cosmojo, which is amazing. And then I set my Card Demise on my Cosmojo. And so, he gets to uh, summon a Delta Shuttle and just, you know, does his things, but I just end up Cosmojoing it, and then next turn I have a card Demise following it up with, and he knows this because I'm telling him this, and so he just decides to scoop because he's like, there's nothing I can do to actually win this game. He bricked with, you know, not having any field spells, so he can't actually do anything there. He, you know, I think he, like, plays, like, nine field spells, too. I think he plays three Terraforming, three Island, and three Cosmotown. Like, he plays quite a few of them and he just didn't draw any of them, and that's unfortunate, but that's honestly just the way this sort of thing happens sometimes from time to time. But anyway, this video was far from like the most streamlined and sleek thing that's ever been done, but I do actually like the way this was done, and honestly, this little like playtesting session thing might be uh, might be a valid thing and candidate for me to do uh, live streaming on in the future, where like me and my friend get on and we just like do nothing but like playtest on DN or something for live streams or something like that. I definitely like it because it's really chill, we can change things, we can make the best plays, we can talk about the plays, stuff like that, and it's just like a really chill like recording environment. So anyway, as always guys, thanks for watching, like, comment, subscribe, do all the nonsense you usually do. Let me know if you liked this specific type of video where like, yes, it's on DN, and yes, I am like talking with my friend online, but I'm commentating over it, stuff like that. Just, just let me know what you think about this whole little thing, uh, because I would like to continue doing that if it's something that you guys would like to see, where we just play games of just stuff, testing for events and stuff like that. But other than that, if you want to support me, clicking ads on my videos is the best way to do so. Helps me out a ton, makes me make money, all that sort of stuff, and it would be greatly appreciated if it's something you could take, you know, the few seconds out of your day it would take to actually click some advertisements for me. It would help out a ton, like I've already said, and it would be really cool of you guys to, to do that. But other than that, as always, guys, thanks for watching, and as always, guys, take care.